how y'all are. It's your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range on the oh, biscuits and gravy on the Bergen Gun Range rifle with my next installment on. Hey, I got this old used gun. The old used gun I got today is a Jim Dandy, buddy. This is a Savage manufactured. And this is a number four mark five is that right yeah oh let's see what it says here it is a number four mark five yeah number five mark four yeah okay this would be along the lines of this is marked u.s property and the code on it is for savage manufacturing so this gun was actually made in the united states was issued to the british government on lend lease and was come back into the gun, country at one time or another as a surplus gun uh this little guy's lucky <coughs> he hasn't been butchered up or anything it's all original military and complete and correct all the wood is matching on it um uh, it has battle sight on the back of it. And you see these later models of them. They only have the battle sight. They don't have this at all. You know, uh, it's a 10-shot uh, removable box magazine. But typically, they were loaded with stripper clips, which is handy because we've got ammunition on stripper clips. We have an original bandolier of ammunition for it. So we're going to run about 10 through it and see how it actually shoots. This one is all matching. The serial number on the receiver, the bolt, and so forth all match. Uh, it doesn't have a matching magazine, but you seldom ever see them with a ma matching magazine. Of course, the, the magazine on these guys are is detachable. Okay. Now, I don't know why they made the magazine detachable, but uh, they did. And as far as I know, extra magazines weren't issued in combat. So... I don't know why they would have a detachable magazine rifle and not issue extra magazines. But they issued stripper clips, and they work very well. This one has a... I'm not 100% sure if it's original or not. It looks real good, but it is the original configuration of sling that would have gone on one. This one is in gray. I've seen them in olive drab green, gray, uh, khaki... Uh, parade white and so forth but it has a original and correct sling to go on it it is english proof marked and it is does have england stamped on it which i believe is the way they've done it because i've seen many colt revolvers and automatics and so forth that were stamped england even though they were obviously manufactured in the united states just their way of doing it all right then uh, these guys are known for their accuracy, so we've got the old 125-yard steels targets that we've always got up at over here on this range, and we're going to uh, see if we can actually perpetrate some bullet impacts. Get me some ear mufflers on. See if I can get this thing loaded with a strip clip. I can get that round to actually come out of there. All right. Okay. All right. I give up. These strippers are not real smooth. Of course, they're World War II. I mean, you know. In World War II, when these stripper clips and this ammunition was new, it probably worked in it pretty good. But we're not having much luck. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Let's see if we can put 10 in it. Get them in there correctly so they don't get rim lock. We 
We'll get it loaded here in a minute. Fire with us. All right, there we go. Now, get one up in it. There we go. All right, let's see if we can hit anything with it. Got the guy all safe fire. We'll see. Ooh, that kind of flint locked a little bit. <laughs> that one kind of flint locked a little bit. Pulled the trigger and nothing happened. For a second. Let's try that again. That kind of throw you off right there. All right, let's try it again. That was a hit. That was a hit and see. But it kind of flint locked. It's kind of a click bang. Yeah, okay. That was a little solider hit there. Yeah, buddy. If they don't flint lock, I can hit it pretty good. Gun shoots pretty good for all the years it has on it. Flint locked. Yeah, bam, y'all. I got used to the flint locking and got to where I could hit with it. All right then. Uh, that's a pretty good rifle. Um, oh, there's the Savage Manufacturing Mark right there. Okay. Uh, boy, these guys used to be cheap. They used to not cost anything. You could buy this rifle for. $49 at Rose's department store back when I was in my 30s. Now a rifle like this is worth, you see these guys in this condition run in the neighborhood of $500 or, or six, you know, especially ones like this that are all military and complete, you know, and they've got matching tone on the wood and so forth. Uh, yeah, these guys are getting to be quite valuable. And any original accessories, you know, that go with them, you know, if they have accessories with them, they, they become outrageous. Uh, pretty good old rifle. Uh, number four, Mark three. Is that what we said? It is a... Mark five. I don't know. Is it a Mark V? What is it? It's Mark III. It's a Mark III, right. Okay. So it's like one of the last versions. Now, believe it or not, you actually see this gun in 308. Uh, the mid 60s? Yeah, well, they, what they did was in the mid 1950s, they tried to go to this in the specified NATO caliber, and it didn't work out for them, so they wound up going with the what we know now is an FNFAL or that type of rifle. 
uh, just now standing old gun. Good deer killer, buddy. You can get these things in 220 grain Winchester Super X, you know, and just knock a white-tailed deer's eyes out with it. It's a pretty outstanding old gun. Well, that's about the size of it. Like, take, share, pie, commentate, and some scribble. Leave me no dollar in the Patreon bucket on the way out the door, and if you don't, I'll keep right on making content for you. Uh, God bless everybody. Join the NRA, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye now. <laughs>